We have two items before the committee this morning. Uh, the first one um, is a, uh, it's on for at least the second time. This is a discussion and possible action to staff, direction to staff regarding Mendocino County Code Section 15.20, encroachment upon county roads, possible encroachment permit policy considerations. And we have Director Howard Scheel and Amber Munoz here this morning. And I think we do have a, um, a draft ordinance before us. And, and I believe there's some policy changes that have already right. been made, Howard. Uh, Go ahead. Good morning, Mr. Yeah. Chair, um, com committee members. So what we did was uh, the county council has worked on an actual ordinance revision that I believe has to go before the full board. The department thought that there was a very outdated old event policy that really was implemented through encroachment permits. It just seemed like a good opportunity to update that policy populate it with really more current germane information and also provide additional detail about the subject of the insurance requirements for encroachment permits. And I believe both need to go back to the board because the policy would be a board policy should the whole board choose to adopt it. So um, that really these are here for you to look at at this point, but they, they are not really changed. They're proposed for you to change. Okay. And can you point to in the, um, the, pol the policy number 14 where you have made the changes? Are, are, they, are they under section 8 where it talks about the insurance requirement? It, it's really the policy is completely rewritten. But okay. the portions on the insurance are in section 8. The, uh, you're probably there faster than me. Yes, section 8. And that's where it speaks to the million dollar requirement, but the discretion of the director of transportation and the uh, conditions under which he could lower or raise that requirement. Correct. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason we're proposing that be put in the policy is I believe it's less onerous in the future for the board to adjust the policy than to adjust county code. But it's up to you how you want to do it. County Council's here to explain that they also have a million dollars in county code. But uh, we just thought it was a, a good time to put some things in a policy. You know, you'll see down at the bottom, there's the business license issue back through the policy. We've got other detail about like adopt a road, which is something the board put in place mm -hmm. in the uh, around 2000. And then going back to the 80s, the whole thing of road closure for event, I just thought it was a good concise place to really talk about all the things we do with encroachment permits and um, you know make it a more meaningful document. And I think uh, Deputy Director Munoz has done a real good job of writing that. I. So it's there for your consideration. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Munoz, is there any, anything you would like to point to specifically in your rewrite that, that we should be particularly aware of? Uh, good morning, committee members. Amber Munoz, Deputy Director of Transportation. Um, the two things that I think are significant are the insurance requirement and then the addition of the county business license, which was an issue earlier this year that we've implemented as a, I guess, a department procedure since that time. Um, as Howard said, we really didn't have a board policy on encroachment permits with the exception of the street closure. And so we felt that that was something that we probably should have. So this is, as he said, this is a total rewrite of all the types of permits that we would issue. Mm -hmm. um, could you point me to the, oh, I see. I, item 10 is the business license section. So previously we didn't require that in an encroachment? N no, in, in fact, uh, that is something we had not been doing. Then it came to our attention earlier in the year. And then there were some actually um, uh, 
opinions issued on who should pay it and who shouldn't. So this is just a way for us to put that, um, you know, in writing in this mm -hmm. policy. It just seemed like a opportunity to get that, get that done. Okay. Um, CEO. Yeah. Andrew. Um, Supervisor Hamburg. Thank you. Yeah. I, I uh, usually when we talk about insurance, either increasing or decreasing, that's at the discretion of the risk manager. And in this case, you've written it to say it's the road commissioner that makes that decision. So I'm not certain if there was a reason why, Howard and Matt, it's the road commissioner and not risk, because with all insurance like that, it's risk management, not the department head. I think we were mimicking another county's language. And I can actually comment on that as well. I spoke with Heather, who did not want to be, have every decision run by her. She wanted, she was in agreement with having the road commissioner have that discretion. I'd like something in there that spoke to, even if the decision is the road commissioner's decision, that risk management is consulted on this before Howard would make that decision. It's actually a lot of responsibility for Howard to make that decision rather than risk management. And my preference would be that that decision is made by risk. So um, is there a way we could word that that would be um, clear? I'm sure we could. I'm yeah. sure we could just change the language to say at discretion of the road commissioner, say at the discretion of the risk manager. Uh-huh. Thank you, Howard. Yeah. Or it could be, you know, uh, made by the, I don't know, made with, with a uh, final approval by the risk manager or something to that effect. Because I do understand, Howard, why, it's, why you, it was written, or Amber, how why it was written the way it was. Because you have a better handle on what the, you know, what, what the risks out there are when there's an encroachment activity going on. Yeah, I think the we were mimicking another agency's language, and I think the idea was if someone was just painting a fence or putting in a right. gate post that, you know, <laughs> there would be certain types of things well out of the traveled way that might right. warrant a little relief. But uh, what this means now is before we can give that relief, we give a call to the risk manager. That doesn't matter to us. Yeah. Um. Supervisor McGowan, did you, uh, did you have a comment? So a number of things, but I'll start with the last one first. Uh, I think if the criteria are properly described, uh, we don't need to funnel everything through risk, which uh, I would see would be setting up another policy that would shortly get lost in the shuffle and we wouldn't be in adherence to it anyway. Um, the uh, criteria are in section 8a on page six to seven of the policy and it includes uh, projects which are short in duration i frankly don't think that's a criteria because depending on what they're doing during that short duration they can be creating a huge liability so, uh, i do like located a significant distance from the traveled way uh, and i would say and do not require use of heavy equipment but I think if we kind of spell that out in a little more detail, I don't have an issue with it being to the discretion of uh, the director. Um, and I guess uh, so. Let I'm, me just hold, hold oh, you sure. there for a second. Yeah, maybe we should wrap is, that up. Yeah, first. is there is there language in there you want to change? Because I I see that. Yeah, as, I want to delete projects which are short in duration. They're not limited to. Because it seemed to me that was just a list of possible uh, reasons that the insurance coverage would be would be um, would be allowed. Well, and so maybe uh, the language include but are not limited to maybe needs to be struck also. And if there's something else that really stands out as a valid criteria, we should include it. Otherwise, it it does become completely open ended. <clears throat> 
Amber, do you have any comment on that as the author? I do agree. In, in writing this, we didn't mean that any project short in duration would be subject to lower um, requirements. That was just a possible scenario. Right. So what if you just added the word could include or may include? Well, here it does say examples of projects which which may, at the discretion yeah, of the road commissioner, may. require lower right. insurance coverage. And so that that word is already in there. <clears throat> yes. I mean, that's the way I that's the way I read it. Was that that doesn't mean that every project of short duration would uh, have a lowered insurance requirement? But we could strike short duration from the list and just leave the others. And maybe put in. Uh, a qualifier that because it you know apparently you know you're favoring leaving it well, open the open ended already there with yeah. the word may right well i think uh the um ceo is concerned about you know the somewhat open ended nature um <clears throat> yeah I, I am, and I think that this is an example right now as, you know, the, this policy says, you know, lower insurance coverage gives these examples of projects, and you as a supervisor don't agree with that. That's an example of what could happen without a second set of eyes on this. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> why not just add a sentence at the end that says, uh, final approval shall be given by the risk manager? Well, because then every encroachment permit where <clears throat> the director wants to lower the insurance okay. requirement goes to risk. But. Well, well, let me just say that the vast majority <laughs> of risk. our permits <laughs> are issued to um, utility companies and they're sort of the normal customers. The amount of gate posts, driveway, those kind, I mean, Amber, take a guess. It can't be that many a year that are even of those natures and usually i think the idea of this exemption would be for some of those really small things that we occasionally get most people um, probably don't bother getting a permit they just go ahead and do what they want to you're do. absolutely right so what they usually end up being is after the fact corrective permits that we issue when we catch someone doing that you're right that happens quite frequently <clears throat> but it sounds like you're comfortable with uh, leaving or including language to final approval of risk if you're reducing the requirements since it there aren't that many that come across your desk anyway I don't have a problem with okay that. and Heather do you have a problem yeah well, no. I agree with whatever the CEO says <laughs> okay that's good answer that's <laughs> a good answer yeah. Yeah. she'll like that yeah. <clears throat> I okay so do, I, I do, would like to strike <clears throat> uh, which are short in duration because okay. I really don't think that's a criteria. Okay, and then or have we agreed that we're just going to add a sentence that final sign off or final approval will be by the risk manager? Yes, we can definitely do that. We will also need to add that to the ordinance language as well. Okay. No, go ahead. Well, and so it sounds uh, from the introduction is as if this is another example of the famous indirection of the county where somehow the encroachment permit policy became the vehicle for approval for road closures for special events right which in which wind up independently coming to the board right for approval anyway but those then start with your department yeah, the way it works is we, the first time under the policy we've reiterated here, we bring it to the board as far as the event. And then implementing the event, the encroachment permit is the mechanism we use procedurally, but that we actually don't issue. And then the way the policy is, is if the event has no controversy, that every year we're empowered to just issue another permit. But if there is controversy, then we bring it back to the board. That's okay. that's the procedure we operate under now. And where is that written? It was in a resolution in 2000, and there again, this was just a good opportunity to get this kind of all in one place. And um, 
you know, I think do a little better job of, I mean, we were talking about public transparency and, and uh, you know, the policies are right there on the website. Uh, just seemed like a good opportunity to d really put in writing what the department's been doing, either under board direction or state law. So then that's all described under road closures, the actual uh, policy that we follow. Correct. And then um, you mentioned that the million is included in the ordinance as well as in the, the policy. And uh, I support that because I think it's you know, some people are going to be aware of the ordinance that aren't going to be aware of the policy. And, uh, you know, so we are establishing the basic principle that, yes, unless granted a waiver, you will have a minimum of a million insurance. Um, now, the first uh, section of the ordinance, no person shall construct new road or driveway approaches to any county highway or install any culvert or pipe within the right of way of any county highway. Would it make sense to add or perform any other work in the county right of way without first securing a permit for that purpose? You're in which page? Uh, page oh, the ordinance. one of the ordinance, section ah, ah. 1520030A. You could add something to the effect of um, repair, I guess. Well, why not just or perform any other work in the county right away? Because if they're out yeah. there working in the right away, we want That's them to have an encroachment permit, don't we? Good point. So, do we <clears throat> do we have that language? That John, did you have, did we get that? County that Council, number? I think, made note of that because they've been working on the ordinance, so. So again, it was just after the uh, comma that follows uh, within the right of way of any county highway, comma, or perform any other work in the county right of way. And then typically when we're uh, making changes, we would have a clean and a red line, but it, it may be that the original policy is being so completely rewritten that uh, a red line would be pointless. It would all be red. Yeah. yeah. For the, correct, for the policy it was mo mostly overdone entirely. For the ordinance, all, the only change that was made was the addition of paragraph E. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So then, and assuming we recommend this go to the board, then uh, the staff report in describing the ordinance could reference that the only change there is to uh, contained in paragraph E. The slight Just change so the board paragraph understands a. Correct. the only thing that's really being done. Yeah. So those were my comments. Great. Okay. Uh, anyone in the audience care to comment? Mr. Howard? Good morning. Lee Howard, North Coast Builders Exchange. Well, John took a little bit of the wind out of my sail with the first one because I thought right off the bat any other work was appropriate. So you have to cover it all, and that does cover it all. Um, but I think that there's a couple other spots in here that I'd like to. I want to go back and give you some, a couple scenarios so you understand. Uh, a few years ago, I don't know if it was Greenwood Road or Fish Rock Road that the cable company came in or, and plowed cable across and went from virtually the coast all the way over to Sacramento. Mount, with Mountain it. View, I Mountain think. Mountain View, yeah, I think. I, I lose track, but uh, that became quite a a project and 
and the county didn't have a real good handle on it and I know that there was at least one supervisor over there supervising it and that had real problems with it that's the type of problem projects that you can get into you can get into the most mon mundane little digging of a hole out in the middle of the street to a major road closure so you know and and that is a road closure part of the problem comes in in the past in from my perspective that the county hasn't had the I don't know if it's ability or the time or the energy to follow up on a lot of these things um, when you see somebody trenching out across the road or down along the road and the permit you know requires import backfill on the whole thing and they go ahead and they trench a half a mile or a mile or whatever um, and uh, they come along with a side dump bucket pick up some little bit of gravel and throw into the trench and then the spoils from the trencher are still alongside they go and scoop the trencher spoils up and whatever falls into the ditch falls into the ditch um, six months later after a good rain the county's back out there fixing the 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 trench line and in some cases maybe the county has made the contractor come back or the utility come back and fix that but it shouldn't be on the on the county and the on the county taxpayer now you've gone through everything this morning and there is one more section in here that i think is never been seen before in this thing and that's the security issue here uh, item number nine in this and I think it's a good shot at, at trying to bring it into uh, the 21st century the problem is is it falls a little bit short in the fact that when you start listing uh, cash deposits certified checks etc you miss one of the main ones in construction and that's a bonding capacity uh, that you could put a bond in place to bond that and at the end of the year you come back and and look at that to see if you want to release the bond retention or the security retention either one but you when you do that most of the time you're doing this in virtually every construction project that you have out there if you have a contractor doing work for the county there's bonds in, included in the in the contract um, and the county looks at those and 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 takes them this is an, almost an overkill because i think that the security and i have to to the riders you meant this to be in the construction section or part of construction in the encroachment permit you didn't mean a bond for somebody that's going out and putting on a parade you didn't mean a bond for somebody that was doing minor things uh, i think that that portion of it i would hope to get spelled out a little more clearly in what you want because it isn't right now uh, and to take somebody's security agreement on say a very minor project you don't spell out where you're going to require bonds and if a person came in and you required a twenty thousand dollar bond and the only way he could do it was a cash bond or a bank letter that ties him up for the full year so I, I'm saying that this needs to be thought out a little more in, in my opinion in our opinion um, from where we're at right now this is unless I'm wrong this is new this whole nine section is new to the encroachment permit the second thing I have is item number 10 it doesn't make any difference if the contractors come into town to work for AT&T it doesn't make any difference if it's PG&E he needs a business license in our opinion to come to work here now if he's coming in and getting the permit for, for them and if the permits being issued under his, his name he certainly needs a business license in the county of Mendocino to come in and work I've done I've been involved in these things that I look back today and still see problems I go back to number nine again still see problems that occurred 
probably 15 years ago out on east side Calpella Road. The county's still out there occasionally patching a ditch line on a big curve there that, that was put in. And you know that the people that put it in didn't care. Because every, I won't, for the longest time, every year, the county was out there patching that shallow, that narrow trench. They're hard to take care of, but there was no way for the county to go back and ensure that the taxpayers were being protected. I think this starts to help. So I, you know, continue to move ahead. I think we've come a long ways to protecting the citizens and giving everybody the same opportunity to look at. I like the fact that risk management is going to have the final sign off on this. I think that it, it is important there. They have a little wider picture. Howard knows, the, the commissioner will know the technicalities of it, what can be there. But when it comes to the big picture, risk management is a, a place to put that. Any question? Well, um, Lee, if you have any um, specific change that you think could improve uh, Section 9. Well, right uh, off the bat, I think it needs to have the same language in it that your, that your contracts have regarding bonding. I mean, that would be easy language to come up with, I think. Uh, you have county contracts that have bond requirements in them yeah. for maintenance. You know, you don't even say in here whether this is a financial bond, a time and material, labor and goods and material. Uh -huh. We really don't say what we're after in here. There's several different types of bonds uh -huh. that you can, a labor and materials bond to make sure that <laughs> you get what you're expect you're going to get when the project's done and you right. have a year to do it i and, and is, is <clears throat> why is it always it's always one year that's always most the amount time, of time involved in a surety most of the time you're looking at through a through a wet season especially in underground stuff mm -hmm. and like i said i can or springs road was a problem when they plowed they plowed that part of that they plowed part of uh from ukiah to uh potter valley and that was a problem when they plow. And I don't know if we see much plowing anymore like we used to, but we used to see a lot of utility plowing. And I've worked for companies that said, make sure you get there at five o'clock on Friday, we'll be done by Sunday, and the county won't even see us, so. Mm -hmm. Well, so there is language in here, though, that um, says may require Surety. It's a surety, but it doesn't. A bond, again, construction. Specifically bonds call are, out a bond is what I would you're spell out a bond out to, to you. the. Yeah, you and can, would, would that be Roman numeral sub five? Um, I mean, we've got. Yeah, you can. I think that's. Cash, a, cashier's check, irrevocable letter of credit. Well, it'd be a, a new four, and then other forms would be the last. Yeah, a, a four or a five, or just put it into. Most of your construction people that are going to be your bigger jobs or your utility companies, a bond is a common thing for them. Right. Okay. But that was your only point on that issue is to specifically include a bond. Yes. And then uh, were there any other specific recommendations that you made? Well, the the again, I think everybody that's working in the county should have well right license. we've already dealt with that one. you you have and you haven't because you you you're well, the they're saying on the utility company if you're working for a, as a sub for a utility company you don't have to have one and this has been an argument here with i don't know if we ever got an answer back all the way on on that whether uh, somebody coming in subbing for a utility company or a a county entity, a special district, is considered that they even have to be looked at for, for a business license. Mm -hmm. And maybe <clears throat> just some clarification, Howard or Amber, on why they're excluded. Well, there was, and I'll let county council respond mm -hmm. to it. You know, there was an opinion that if mm -hmm. they're working for certain categories of, like government agencies, public utilities, I can't remember but that those subs then work under their license and their authority. So 
I'm glad we wrote it out there because, you know, that's fairly new within the last year and that's our guidance so far. It's another good reason to have it in a policy because if, right. if it needed to change, it would be a lot easier for the board to change a policy. But that's our understanding right now right. and that's how we're operating. Right. Our argument to that yeah. is, is that they're an independent contractor. They're <laughs> subbed, granted, but especially if they have to come in and get the permit, they're, they're into themselves. That's their permit, their license. They, Howard says they work under. That isn't possible. A contractor can work for, but he can't work under anybody else's license. Mm. He, his license is not out there to be put on top of. So mm -hmm. if, you, if you're licensed in the state of California to do work and, and, you, and you have to get a contract with the company that you're doing the work for, you're responsible. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and Howard. So, you know, I guess I'm going to agree with some of what Lee Howard's had to say, and I'm going to disagree. And I think I can bring it down to the real policy in my mind where I think we're going to disagree. Comparing an encroachment permit to the provisions of, say, one of my county construction contracts where I have labor and materials bonds, I don't think is appropriate because in that case, we're employing a contractor on a public project and it comes under all those jurisdictions. I think what Amber cited here when she cites streets and highways code is the ability that the department has always had under state law to require a performance bond. In other words, we can have them bond for, again, the whole reason for an encroachment permit is care and protection of the public highway and public safety in regards to traffic operations. That's really what the permit's all about. So he's he's right in that the public can be protected by a bond that, um, you know, if the work is substandard and fails, a performance type bond, that's in state law the way I understand it. As far as labor, well, we would have no reason at all to care what a private company does as far as their labor relations with their contractors. And I guess I feel the same way as far as a utility entering into their own private agreements with uh, contractors to do some of the work. Their public you know, utilities with standing or districts with standing to operate in the right of way. The purpose of our permitting and bonding security is care and protection of the county highway and traffic safety operations mm -hmm. um but but we've always had the ability to require a bond and i we do need to add it to the list i guess we listed the sort of unusual mechanisms when the obvious mechanism the one we almost always would get would be a bonding company bond i guess sometimes you don't even state the obvious because that is usually the first mechanism but some of these other mechanisms have been out there really more for the people who are doing some of these smaller things um, my comments about you know i wasn't director when the williams communication lines went in they went in on fish rock road and on mountain view road they were uh, surface trenched the department did have a lot of problem with them there were permits issued there were inspectors there there were um you know, uh, payments by that utility company uh, was associated with WorldCom. All I remember about WorldCom is at my last private sector job, I had them in my 401k and all of a sudden I lost a big part of my 401k. That's about all I remember about WorldCom. But you know, they basically left the county in the lurch as well as a lot of other people. I forget their, um, who their CEO was, but I think he's in prison still, but. You know, so the department does try to watch those things. We have tried to do better since uh, to, you know, keep compliance. But, you know, Mr. Howard's correct. You know, there are times that trenches settle and they're, they're not put in that well. I would say most of the responsible utility companies, if we call them up, they will come back and make their work right. So we haven't necessarily required bonds from them. The times we've required bonds is where we have a permittee that basically states, you know, I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm not necessarily going to 
you know, fix your road. That's your job. And when I see someone with that kind of attitude, I'll make them post a bond. The other time I've used the bonding is there are certain jurisdictions that the county really doesn't have authority over. And I'll say right now, you know, it's been some of the tribes and the school districts and we'll have them post a bond because we would have no recourse with them if their work wasn't didn't hold up but for the most part if we have an applicant who has a good record that's gone back made things right corrected the problems in the roadway we haven't been requiring a bond i think what the builders exchange is asking is for us to require a bond more than that i think that's where he'd like to see us go we've done that based on mm. circumstance in the past mr howard no i agree with howard completely the, the only thing that's really left out of here is bond okay. and performance bond is the bond i don't look for uh labor and materials or anything else so a performance okay. bond it's it's it should be number one on the list there right, instead right. of down the down the road okay uh as far as the the fact that the county does go out and do it i see right now and last week i saw a utility the local water company dig a hole make the repair to their pipe push the dirt back in and walk away with a little bit of cold mix on it will they come back and take care of it we'll find out in a year you know so it, it it's a trustworthy thing where you go no we're not looking to put a whole lot more uh clumbersome requirements on it just the, the public gets protected this way but i believe you're saying the major or correct me if i'm wrong the major utilities operating with their own forces uh we're not requiring an encroachment permit of them uh there are subcontractors you're saying we ought to require it well if they're coming in for the permit <laughs> yeah yeah okay <clears throat> the, and then the, the, in the case of uh local utilities like a water district i think earlier you were uh, advocating that we should require an encroachment permit of them well, yeah, i think you do we it's do. pretty clear in mm -hmm. here you do already okay. the thing is is i don't think they're following through very well um and this was one in the city uh, last week another one in the city last week that you know that it wasn't going to be taken care of but it, again it was in the city and it, it makes no difference to the county but when they do these repairs and you down the road six months and they see if they're going in on an emergency repair they're supposed to call right and let these people know right. the reality is is that probably not happening a whole bunch of the time especially if the crew goes out monday morning finds a water leak fixes it right then and there they go on to something else but down the road the taxpayers get to pay for that if they're not fixing it right and that's uh, they're required to report it if it's a more than a little bit bigger than that they're required to report it and get a permit for it so i think that it's covered john it's just okay. that it's something that again this piece of paper we get it too draconian and too much in it they'll ignore it anyway so we're trying to strike a balance and i hope that uh, we do thank you okay okay actually yeah. the utilities do get permits they most of them have an annual permit which is what mr howard's referring to as far as notification in other words they can fix a leak in an emergency they're supposed to do a follow-on permit with us for a more permanent repair he's correct though probably way out in the boonies in some of the districts it doesn't get reported and we have to find it and say something to him that does happen Dan, one other yeah. thing i noticed yeah. on my notes John took all my other notes away from me. Um, I would suggest that you look at the same thing you look at for building and planning. If you're going out there, maybe not the first time, but after they do it a couple times that they come in and don't get a permit, when they do get a permit, it's double the fee. Maybe that'll make it a little more, a little bit of incentive to come in and, and do it right. There is no, that isn't in this that that could be handled i guess at a fee hearing next fee hearing mm -hmm. i think i don't know i'm looking at, I don't. i'm still not uh totally clear on where we are on the contractors who are 
performing work on behalf of utilities. I, I'm going to defer and, to county and why council. we are <laughs> waiving the business license on the on those. Uh, Matt or Kit. So this was referred to my office, and it was Mr. Mactasy that was working on this, so I could have him come in. Um, he did look very specifically at the details, and so we did provide that opinion to uh, Mr. Deshiel, so. And, and so that was the opinion of county council that we, we should, should waive fees in, in that or, or waive the county business license requirement? It's not a, there's, it's not a waiver. It's not a waiver. Right. There's certain, uh, certain times when uh, persons would be exempt. And again, that was looking more at public utilities. And again, I'm not as familiar with it. I could have Mr. Mm -hmm. Mactasy come in if you would like to hear from him. Mm -hmm. I just thought that's getting a bit off topic. So. Well, I think it's important to know yeah. what the recommendation was. Yeah, because it, it is a point of contention. We need to get I think county council should have council come over. The board must remember, I'll take PG&E's example, since 1947, you've had a franchise agreement with them. You know, they pay taxes, I think quite a lot of taxes for all their poles and facilities. And I think they're recognized as a public utility and they sort of contribute in another way. And it was my understanding that they're simply the 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 business license wasn't appropriate to them but sure attorney can come over and explain yes. that See, we also issue permits to other government agencies and you know obviously they're don't have business licenses either so the public utility is a quasi you know like public agency i think i'm not sure how that all works well, so why don't we ask county council to uh to comment since right. he is here Morning, Mike. Morning. Michael Mactasy, Deputy County Counsel. And I heard part of the question, heard my name. If you could repeat the question so I know well, exactly. Well, it, it has to do with whether contractors who are performing work for utilities uh, would be required to obtain a business license. Okay, so I, I do remember that. And I, I think from a starting point, um, <laughs> there are a number of exemptions from getting a business license. And I think that it's important to uh, at first also understand the difference between a permit and a business license. They're different rules. You might need a permit, but you might be exempted from getting a business license. And uh, amongst the, the entities that are exempt are uh, public entities. Um, people, uh, utilities are exempt. Um, there's a specific provision in, I believe, state code that exempts them. Um, so a utility would be exempt and by virtue of that their subcontractors would not need a, a business license and that was the opinion that I believe that we gave because um, they're they're doing work for the utility so it's the utility who has the business and is getting the permit and not the, the subcontractor so requiring the subcontractor to do it and not the utility uh, is just uh, it's not quite it's disjunctive and so that was the opinion and it I don't remember more of the specifics but if you wanted to I could probably go back and look at my research mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you've seen this language it's in the um, this new policy 14 and you concur with it I, I don't know what language it basically says no permit uh, the requirement shall not the permit requirement shall not apply to contractors performing work for a utility company or any other person or organization exempted by law. So Supervisor Hamburg, yeah. um, if I could. So one of the things we've tried really hard is we were asked to dedicate Mr. Mactasy completely to code enforcement. So although he's worked on many of these issues and we sometimes talk to him, we're trying really hard not to be working directly with him on these, but using some of the uh, opinions that he's he's given. So. Um, it's been a bit delicate, but we are really trying to keep him specifically mm -hmm. to code enforcement and seeing a lot of good work coming out of that. So I see, but this this language that's in the new policy 14 has been approved is to the approval of county council. What, while Matt's looking at that, I, one comment I wanted to reiterate is is that the language you mentioned was about permits, and again, there's a difference between permits and licenses and right. just to keep that in mind okay to whatever extent okay. and so to confirm the language that was in the policy is just that the requirement for a business license to get an encroachment permit should not be not apply to contractors performing work for a utility company or any, any other person or organization exempted by law 
So that's being redirected at the utility company issue that Mr. McAfee just spoke to, and anything else that is just, to, you know, we're not trying to put in a whole blanket business license policy here in the sentence. We're just referring to whoever else would be exempted from the business license requirement by law. Okay. You good with that? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, so, <clears throat> if I understand correctly, you're saying first, a public utility is not required to get a business license and by extension a subcontractor working for the public utility is not required to get a business license or cannot be required to get a business license I think those are two different things I believe the opinion was that they were, are not required and I, again I'd have to go back I, I did this research maybe four to six months ago and I'd have to review um, where it came from, but I believe it was that um, because they were subcontractors of the utility, the utility is exempt from the business license. The subcontractor doesn't need a, a business license for the sole purpose of doing the work for the utility. Now, if the Correct. subcontractor was doing something else separately, that's a different matter. Understood. So that's um, <clears throat> business license. Yes. Which, as you made the point, is different from permit. Correct. So. Do you have an opinion on may we require an encroachment permit from a subcontractor doing work for a public utility? I, I think that's getting a little bit further from so, my and Howard research. saying yes, <laughs> and and we it, do require it, and we also require it from the public utility. But they apply listing the public utility. They're, they're as agents of the public utility. So, and if they're doing work under the public utilities annual permit, they simply use the public utilities annual Co permit. Correct, but we do require a permit, whether it's the public utility or a subcontractor. Right. Even we just a don't require the business license. Right. Okay. The public utilities have permits required. We just not have not required a business license of the public utility or their agents, which we believe get this exemption blanketed to them. But yes, they still get permits. Thank you. So I'm good. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Okay. Yes, Mr. Howard. We're really uh, splitting hairs to a degree, but when you go to work for one of these util public utilities, which I've done a lot, they require you to go get the permit. And I think that's where it they're not they're exempt from the contractor's license law they don't have to get a contractor's license to go out and do work but their subs if you're working for them you have to have a license they require you to go get the license they're the permit and our argument is if that's the case they're no different than any other contractor out there that they require that but we i guess we will wait and see All I could say to that is we could generalize this language to simply say we'll get a business license unless they're exempt. Then if the opinion of county council changed, we wouldn't have to change the policy. We would just implement, you know, based on new information. So that that would be a, a way to do it. Because okay. right now we're we're basically requiring a business license unless we've been given information that would but, indicate that they're the exempt. applicant is exempt. Right. So exactly. we could generalize that okay i think we might okay, have already so I, generalized it yeah so i yeah. think that will deal with 10. now back to nine uh have we agreed that under 9a we're going to add bonding yes requirement per performance bond performance yes. bond and that 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 should be the first thing we list yeah rather uh, than the last was an oversight i like i said it was just too obvious yeah. we should have listed it okay great now, what else do we need to deal with? Because maybe this would be ready to go to the board. Do you think we do you think we need to bring this back to committee again? I don't. I uh, I think as long as staff incorporates uh, what we've discussed, it could go to the board okay. with our recommendation for approval. Okay, so um, that is by order of the chair we will then send this on to the board of supervisors for their approval 
There, there are actually two things, the ordinance and the policy. Right. I'm assuming the ordinance has to follow a different track and the policy would be a different track. So there well, may be two they, items. In yeah, fact. They, correct. They could come together, right. but the ordinance will, will need a first reading and then right. an approval right. two weeks later. Okay, any staff comments, final comments? Okay, good. Thank you very much. Okay, we will move on then to our second item, which is discussion and possible direction of staff regarding increasing the solid waste solid waste franchise fee as a potential source of road maintenance funds and I see that Louisa Morris is here and Janelle Rao is probably on call but uh, I don't think we necessarily need her do you Supervisor Carmel? Hamburg no actually uh, deputy CEO Rao had to go to the museum this morning so she's not okay. in the buildings that's fine so um, this is an item that was referred uh, to the committee by the board. Uh, and I see that we have a staff report which uh, outlines the current franchise fees and um, shows what the increases would be if franchise fee uh, amounts were increased uh, from 13, you know, up to 13% all the way up to 25% and that uh, contract rewrites would be required to do this. Um, and with that, Luisa, I'll just see if you have any comments. I don't really. Um, good morning, supervisors. Morning. Um, and um, I think that uh, what it I was not here when it was referred out to mm -hmm. this committee. So, but my my read on it is that there are additional uh, road maintenance funds needed, and uh, the board wanted to look at um, how the franchise fees might be increased to supply a source for those funds. So, I'm not sure how how much in the way of uh, how much in the way of revenue the. the um, County Department of Transportation would like to realize mm -hmm. um, but obviously if we doubled the franchise fee from 12 to 24 percent we would double the amount of, of revenue uh, realized from that um, it would require as as Supervisor Hamburg has stated contract amendments to all four contracts um, and those those uh, increases would um, possibly be passed through to the ratepayers um, because that is what the haulers would probably want to do. So it would mean rate increases. Well, I think they would absolutely be yeah. yes. passed through. Yeah. Yes. Because right. it's a, you know, it's on top of the rates that they charge. It's based on, it's calculated based on the revenue that they collect. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. which um, in the case of waste management um, is is substantially more than uh, the net revenue is substantially higher and thus the franchise fees they pay are higher than for SWOW as you can see from the the first line of numbers that I gave you mm -hmm. um, so I was thinking of something else. Louise, so what are yeah. the geographic boundaries of the waste management franchise area? So there's two? two two parts of the waste management franchise area. There's the coastal zone, which is Fort Bragg has its own franchise. Mm -hmm. And then um, the the coastal area goes down to uh, Comte. Well, wait, it goes down. I think waste management services um, down to the Navarro River and then up to Pacific Star Winery on the coast. And then inland, the inland area, I think the, the boundary, it's actually a straight boundary, and I don't remember exactly where on Comptukaya Road it runs. Mm -hmm. But the inland area um, is, uh, it's probably, I think uh, Comptukaya is part of the coastal area. 
Mm-hmm. So I think Comchi, uh, east of Comchi is part of the inland area, and that runs um, up to, uh, you know, the Willits. Willits is served by Solid Waste of Willits, and, but um, I think that uh, uh, Waste Management does everything around the city of Ukiah. Mm-hmm. The city of Ukiah is done by CNS. Mm-hmm. Down yeah. to and Redwood Hopland Valley. Redwood and Redwood Valley, Valley uh-huh. Calpella. So uh-huh. and then east, um, I believe they also do Powder Valley. So, uh-huh. quite a bit. so the the geographic boundary. I mean, I mean, I'm sure we have a map of this somewhere, but just yes. roughly the geographic boundary of franchise area two is greater than that of the other three combined. I don't think so. No, it's actually, not. no. Okay, no, just more it, customers. But it I has think, more, far more customers because it's customers. basically greater Ukiah. urbanized Fort Bragg okay. and greater urbanized yeah. Ukiah yeah. outside the city yeah. limits. I was surprised to see that it pays twice, more than twice the franchise fees that SWOW pays. And I think the argument, if I remember when when the board was talking about this, was just the amount of wear and tear on the roads that are caused by heavy mm. trucks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was the logic. So, um, Supervisor John. Well, you uh, and you're absolutely right. And I think we can see, and you can see it all over the county, including within the cities, it's, uh, you could almost call them uh, the, the garbage truck ruts, uh, you know, as they're one of the principal heavy truck users, and I think they do create a fair amount of wear and tear. Um, so if we <clears throat> if we were to recommend an increase, I believe in keeping with the, the spirit of the referral, we would recommend that these be funds that would we would then pass through to the to the road fund. Uh, for road repair <clears throat> what's uh, the information we don't have is what are the uh, typical franchise fees for other areas and uh, our solid waste director may have some information on that years ago I know that um, at least one of the cities was <clears throat> at 19 percent and they might have increased since then but it would be helpful to know what are the franchise fee percentages for the incorporated cities and uh, maybe adjacent counties like Sonoma Humboldt Lake. Yes, and, and that's um, uh, uh, that's a really good question. I was just making a note to ask HF&H what the franchise fees are on average in other rural counties in California. And, um, and then I could also come up with information on or make a table showing what the franchise fees are for all the contracts in, in Mendocino County. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't have of, that information. I kind of think we need to have that before we can get serious about a recommendation. Right. Yeah, I do too. I'd also suggest that perhaps if, if, the, if the committee and the board would like to increase the franchise fees, that it be done concurrent with uh, the rate increase, the annual rate increase, which happens um, and is effective on January 1st of each calendar year. That way it could be, the pass-through could be done then and, and it, the residents wouldn't be hit with two different, two different rate increases. increases. Yeah. It would all happen at once. Mm-hmm. That's just my, my suggestion. Mm-hmm. And then two, you know, what kind of what kind of the Department of Transportation, it would be great to get them to weigh in as to what kind of money they, they would like, you mm-hmm. know, what, what they think they need um, in order to maintain the roads due to the truck traffic, that mm-hmm. the garbage trucks and the, the wear and Well, I'm sure they, they could spend whatever <laughs> could be generated. I don't think that would be a problem. But, you know, certainly we don't want our franchise fees to be out of line with neighboring counties Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that uh, it's the wear and tear you know mm -hmm. uh, Mendocino County is Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. probably a little more like Mm -hmm. perhaps humble than it is Mm -hmm. also what is the uh, current status of our 
two contracts, the waste management and SWOW. I mean, when do those contracts come up for renewal? 2021. 2021 for both of them? I believe so, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I have the, I have one here. Um, and are both companies current in their payment to the county for fran on franchise fees? Yes, uh, SWOW will owe for um, two quarters at the end of this month. Mm -hmm. So, but that's that's going to be due soon, and so will Empire Waste, but just for one quarter. Mm -hmm. SWOW for two because the board granted SWOW a an extension for the first quarter, twenty seventeen. Uh -huh. And are other fees up to date with our haulers? Yes, there is some difference of opinion um, on the part of. Our department and SWOW as to what the numbers should be for some of those fees but um, of course we think the num the the amount should be higher and they think it should be lower that but we're working the, that out uh, recyclables uh, it's the, the Casper composite. rent Casper rent the Casper rent yeah okay yep but yes they are up to date currently okay and Empire Waste Management is okay. as well well I think um, if if you could uh, just do a little more research for the committee mm -hmm. and we could look at this again at our next meeting. Um, unfortunately, you will not be at our next <laughs> meeting, mm -hmm. but um, I think we should keep this item in the committee and continue to look at it. Well, I would agree and uh, perhaps, however, you might have the opportunity to uh, get this information on other jurisdictions yeah. Yeah, and maybe just send a memo to the committee mm -hmm. yeah. uh, copied to county council and the CEO okay. yes, that it have that. that information so we'll have no, that at our next meeting even Good. if we don't have a directed Good. and while you're here can I ask you about Albion um, I so, no I can't, can't. You're not, not on <laughs> <No. the agenda. laughs> all right I can't <laughs> I'll ask you after the meeting. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else on this item? Okay, I don't hear anything. Ask for public? Oh, I will ask for the public. Oh, you really didn't want it. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lee. I thought you we were, were doing pretty well. I, I actually thought you were just <laughs> here for the show. Well, <laughs> you know, do you remember not too long ago when you tried to uh, figure out a way to tax logging trucks? You remember what happened I to you then? We talk about it when Budge was the director. You can't do it. You no, couldn't but, do it that no, way. No, but we can approve a franchise no, fee. You, you probably can, but I, you, you're, you know, you sit there and say, uh, gee, these these trucks. I have a three axle truck out there that is similar to a garbage truck. Twenty seven hundred dollars a year, and my just my weight fee for that truck. That's to fix. The roads. The roads yeah. Now, if you don't get it from Sacramento, that isn't my fault. But these garbage trucks, I would challenge you that while you're looking, look at the fees on what they're paying on those garbage trucks because of the weight. The weight is predicated on your fee is predicated on your weight. The heavier you are, the more road they figure, the more road you tear up. Right. So, you know. I would like to really see the annexus between what you're saying, the garbage trucks are tearing up our road, we need to take more money. Uh, this is just a, another way to tax, and you've already said it, the rate payers are paying the rate. Oh, and yeah. only part of the rate payers, or only the rate payers are gonna pay for this in the franchise area. So mm -hmm. I really question, you know, Sacramento should give a lot more money of the weight fees to the counties to start with, and they don't. But uh, I know you're looking for funds, but I'm not so sure this is the right the way to do it. Yeah. I don't think there is any right way to there do is. it. <laughs> That's our problem. No, no popular way. No popular way to do it. Yeah. I have a suggestion. If yes. I may. Um, when the contracts renew, you could, as as was done with the renewal of the waste management contract, mm -hmm. you could ask then for some sort of payment in order to um, to renew the contract. I think it was five hundred thousand dollars waste management paid to renew their contract. Mm -hmm. 
and, and I'm sorry, what kind well, of that that was a payment made uh, in consideration of the contract extension, I believe. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. So in 2021, there might be an opportunity to do that mm -hmm. for all of these contracts, all the franchise contracts. And how is that different than a franchise fee? Um, well, the the way as it was paid Mr. by Howard the company. Said, it's paid by the company rather by, than by the rate payers. Yeah. So that might that might be more appropriate. But I dare say they still pass that on to the rate payers. Well, they have to get approval from us to do right. it. Well, they're, they they're, they don't pass it on, but you, it's one of those things where you may not see it reflected in the bill, but you know you paid for it just the same. Yeah. Right. Well, the rates are highly regulated by the, the rate adjustments are highly regulated by the contract. So they, they really cannot increase anything except for by COLA, fuel adjustment pricing, right. and then pass-throughs. And we have to approve every, I review, our, mm -hmm. you know, the county reviews every pass-through. Mm -hmm. But their so, willingness to make that one-time payment for contract extension was based on their judgment that it was the profit of extending the contracts was more than worth the one-time payment. But I don't see that as a, a mechanism for funding uh, road repair. Sure. Well, it went to the county and probably to the general fund, so using it for the Department of Transportation only would be, might not be um, what the county wants. But the, uh, whether you want to extend the contract or whether you want to go out for bid, you know, that's, that's something that's going to be decided individually each time contracts come up for renewal. That's right. So I don't see that as an ongoing source of funding. And again, it tends to be a one-time thing when it happens at all. You mm -hmm. know, it's not the norm. I was just trying to think of a way that the, the money could come from the company rather than from the ratepayers, because the I think Mr. Payers. Howard's point is well taken. Okay. One thing I would yeah. uh, suggest if we, you know, wind up going down this road, because it does uh, state here that the franchise agreements would need to be amended, uh, similar to how we often do, uh, we could provide that the contracts would require payment of the franchise fee, but the franchise fee would be established by the board by resolution, so that if we ever wanted to change the franchise fee in the future, that wouldn't be, uh, that would not require a contract amendment, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the contract would simply require a payment of the adopted fee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> anything else on this item? Okay. If not, we will go on to. Thank you, Louisa. Oh, thank you very much. And if you can, can you wait for just one second so I can talk to you about LPN? Yes. Um, we have the minutes of June 12th, 2017. By okay. By order of the chair, those uh, minutes are approved. Uh, any additional public expression? Supervisor Krosky, did you have anything to add? Okay. Uh, item 3C is announcements. Are there any announcements? Yes, Nicole. The next meeting of the committee is scheduled for August 12th. Okay, thank you very much. August the 12th is our next meeting. Excuse me, August 14th. <laughs> oh, excuse, uh, excuse us. August 14th will be the next meeting. Will Class K be back on the 14th? Th that is the intention. Do you know, have you talked to uh, the building inspector? Well, let's make a note for that. Carmel, any comment on that? Oh, but we could, um, we, we will follow up and we could, um, they could do some update, I would think, even if they're not completely done with their research working on yeah, this. Yeah, I do think we need, a, okay. we need to keep so, moving on that. So, Nicole, if you'll let them know, there needs yeah. to be, at a minimum, an update. Thank you. Okay, any uh, matters from staff? If not, we will stand adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>